Welcome to the latest in the Russo-British Chamber of Commerce webinar series. Today, we'll be looking at the support that is available to UK companies looking to invest in the Moscow region. My name's Alf Torrance. I'm the Executive Director of the RBCC, and I'm delighted to welcome Anton Loginov, Deputy Minister for Investment, Industry and Science in the Moscow region. We're extremely grateful to you, Anton, for taking time to speak to us today. And of course, as always, thank you to the audience for joining us. Before we get started, a quick run through on the ground rules. After I finish, Deputy Minister Loganov will make his presentation. I'm sure you'll have your questions for him once he's finished. So please use the chat room function and we'll try and pick out some of the more popular themes. If you want, you can ask him questions direct. And if you want to do so, please use the hand up function. And again, I'll cue you uh, when the opportunity arises for you to ask him a question. As it's traditional, we'll be recording the webinar, which will be posted on our website after the event. If you'd like to follow up on any of the issues that Deputy Minister raises, his details are available on our website, but of course you can get in touch with him direct. Before I um, hand over to um, Deputy Minister Loganoff, I'd just like to say a few words. I know most of the audience uh, are familiar with the RBCC, but if you're not, we're a bilateral, not-for-profit, non-political organization, representing uh, Russian companies in the UK and UK companies in Moscow. Uh, a few words about the, um, re the economic relationship. Um, at the moment, uh, the bilateral trade in goods and services is worth about 16 billion um, in the year. Not the biggest, but what often surprises uh, UK audiences is that Russia is a bigger market than for instance, South Africa, uh, with which we have a very long uh, history and economic relationship. And uh, it is a little bit uh, smaller than India as well. To give you an idea of numbers of um, companies that do business in Russia, uh, last time we checked, there were over 4,000 UK VAT registered companies doing business here. Many of those, of course, in Moscow. Um, and ag again, many of those not necessarily with a physical presence, but uh, often acting through an agent. And I suppose a good example of that would be uh, Hamley's, an iconic British uh, toy shop, uh, which is strongly represented in Russia, particularly in Moscow, but they don't actually have a physical uh, presence on the ground and are distributed through uh, places like the central um, uh, children's store. Despite the tense political relationship, contact between the two countries continues, including a UK ministerial visit to Russia at the end of last year. This is encouraging as it allows pragmatic engagement and the ability for both sides to compartmentalize challenging politics, but keeping the good business. We, of course, at the RBCC are always optimists um, and we are in the business of um, selling Russia as a, an attractive investment destination, which of course it is. And uh, for many or for most uh, UK businesses, uh, the logical entry point into the Russian market is of course through Moscow. It is the largest uh, domestic market in Russia, uh, and it accounts for a significant amount of the Russian total of Russia's total GDP. UK companies doing well in Russia uh, come in all uh, shapes and sizes, and I'd just like to uh, give you a few examples, really, just to give you a feel for for the types of British companies that are doing business here. I suppose the most obvious one to start with would be BP, one of the biggest um, investors uh, in, in Russia globally. Uh, it's a household name, of course, uh, even more so now that uh, it owns um, a 20% stake in Rosneft. Uh, another sort of uh, another success story uh, of a, a large British company would be JCB, uh, the um, manufacturer of uh, industrial plant equipment. Uh, and then looking at companies um, of medium scale, uh, a good example would be uh, Agreco, which is um, in the power generation business. Uh, they do a lot of off-grid uh, um, generators and uh, Moscow and Russia has, has always been a very good market for that company. Goes without saying, um, pharmaceuticals are well represented here. Uh, GSK um, does, does um, very well. And more recently, AstraZeneca, because the coronavirus has become a global household name. But it actually, it was one of the, um, I think it was the first British company to actually sign a special investment contract in Russia and has a large uh, production plant in Kaluga, 
which opened back in 2015 and, of course, continues to do very important work with respect to coronavirus uh, and uh, has a significant collaboration with the Gamaleya Research Institute, which produces uh, the Russian Sputnik vaccination. There's a host of um, extractive mining industries uh, um, represented, um, and I'll just finish off uh, talking about um, a great uh, example of a uh, UK company doing well, both in Russia and, and more particularly in Moscow, and that's Accelerate. Um, many of you with offices in Moscow will actually be storing, probably unbeknownst to you, but your data will be stored in uh, Accelerate's data farm. Uh, they've been um, doing business in the Russian market for over 10 years now, and only this uh, two months ago had their most significant investment in Russia, opening up uh, a major um, plant, uh, a major um, data center in the south of Moscow, of course, with, with the help of the Moscow government. Um, that's all I say. I hope that that's given you a little bit of feel for, for the wide variety of, of, of business uh, businesses doing um, good business here. Of course, that sometimes gets lost in, in, in all the negative news that uh, is about. But um, I'd now like to hand over to, to um, my colleague and um, Deputy Minister Loganoff. It's, uh, as I say, great that um, you've decided to talk to us today. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much for your presentation. I you, you, you have just started a presentation of Moscow region. <laughs> oh, one second, I will switch on my presentation. Mm -hmm. Here is it. Perfect. Your Excellency Mr. Torrance, dear colleagues, good, good, uh, good afternoon. From behalf of Moscow region, I want to thank you for inviting on this event and for your interest toward, towards Moscow region. My name is Anton Loginev. I work for Ministry of Investments, Industry and Science, and I'm responsible for foreign cooperation of our region uh, and foreign investors existing or just potential. As for our ministry, uh, it is responsible for international cooperation, industrial development, in uh, investment climate in the region, science and innovation. During my speech, I would like to make a short overview about Moscow region and its business opportunities. Moscow region is a territory located uh, just off the Moscow Ring Road. Our territory exceeds 44 thousand square kilometers, 18 times bigger than Moscow city. On the slide on the right side, the gray color is Moscow region. Uh, the white inside of the gray is Moscow city. But usually when we are speaking about economy or labor market or consumer market, we are speaking about Moscow agglomeration with total population more than 25 million of people and one third of Russia's consumer market. We are logistics center of European part of Russia, main highways, railways, four international airports are located on our territory. The new highway SCAT launched the beginning 2021. It is marked with a green on the slide. We are quite good in science and innovation. From Soviet times, there is definition science city, a city, a territory with high concentration of universities, colleges, R&D centers, and other innovation infrastructure. For example, special, uh, for example, Dubna with its nuclear research center, Zhukovsky and Karolev airspace centers of Russia with airshow Max and others. In Russia, there are total 13 science cities Eight of them are located in Moscow region. One fifth of all scientific researches and development are conducted in our region. Because of some words about COVID situation and current 
economy situation. Because of the last well, large population and its high density, we were in top three of COVID victims. But thanks to our Ministry of Healthcare, we minimized negative scenario for, for our citizens and for our economy as well. As for economy, uh, as for economy we have the same budget income as in 2019, minus 11% for investments and 9.2% of industrial production. I, will, I want to highlight that uh, we've got more than 400 project, investment projects uh, during 2020. And uh, there were no case when the project was canceled. There were some uh, cases that then uh, it was uh, forwarded the launching of this program was uh, uh, the launching of this factory was uh, forwarded to the next uh, 2021 because of the situation with the borders and it was not possible to invite a specialist from uh, abroad uh, to launch the factory to start the equipment this year we're waiting for 70 foreign projects on our territory Top three challenges we have passed during COVID. The first one, lack of doctors. The second one, lack of beds. And the third, lack of uh, masks, gloves, and protective tubes. Uh, the first one we have uh, uh, surfaced and we asked our Ministry of Defense uh, to help with uh, military doctors and our medical universities as well. We solved this question. The second, uh, beds. We re-equipped our, our biggest exhibition centers, Crocus Expo and Patriot Exhibition Center. So we also work, uh, have overcome this challenge. And uh, the third one, uh, we uh, pushed a new support measure. We have, uh, we have um, offered up to 80% compensation for production lines and its installation for our business. So now we've got uh, 22 factory that produce masks, respirators, protective suits. Some of them are already get certification from European Union and uh, selling their goods for some European countries. Today we have nearly 1 million of people already vaccinated. Just to lighten the mood after the slides with COVID, we, Moscow region, have a great foreign investors activity during the last year, as I have already mentioned. Uh, and this year will be the same. As it can be said, they find, they find new opportunity within this turbulent situation. For example, Monin from France, Sire producer, Caflex, Italy, thermal insulation, Tete Group, Turkey, textile production have started construction of their new factories on our territory. Companies from India, Denmark, France, Germany, Korea, US, Italy, and many others extend its industrial uh, or retail areas launched new production equipment. More than 1.2 billion euro investments and 6,500 workplaces were or will be created this year. These are only figures of foreign investors. Our uh, uh, regional and Russian investors are more active. To achieve so positive investment flow and fasten all procedures, regional region has a network of industrial park and special economic zone. More than 1,000 of residents, 1,000 of companies are already located on the territory of these industrial parks and special economic zone techno parks. This is a list of our uh, companies. More than, we, we've got more than 400 uh, foreign companies 
in, in our region. This is just a small list of companies that have chosen Moscow, Moscow region. Special slide for British companies. We've got 10 of them, more than 90 million of euros investments and more than 2000 of workplaces. But just, just 10, we are welcome new companies from Great Britain to join our investment family. As for industrial development, we've got a joke that we've got all industries except oil and gas. Some of them can be interesting or potentially profitable for British companies. For example, automobile industry. There is a forecast that the Russian market will be the largest in Europe. Major car producers already localized their factories, their production in Russia. Uh, Volkswagen Group, Mercedes, BMW, Toyota, Hyundai, Geely, Mazda, and others. Some of these car manufacturers uh, have chosen Moscow region uh, or some spare past producers. We are quite well uh, uh, situated. Um, biggest car producers are localized in St. Petersburg region, Kaluga region, Moscow, Moscow agglomeration, and Tatarstan. So uh, because of our logistic situation, uh, producers of spare parts can uh, get additional benefits from localization on our territory. By the, federal, uh, by the federal regulation, car producers should, should extend their localization every year. From 2019, there is a point system. If you uh, localize some part, the result, the result will be some uh, points. For example, 900 points give, support, uh, give, give the government measures. Uh, 2,000 uh, points gives government procurement like produced in Russia. Most of car producers in Russia are looking for spare parts produced on the territory of Russian Federation. For, uh, for example, we, are pre we're, uh, we have prepared a special industrial park uh, for automobile industry. Uh, it is known by its uh, main uh, key resident Mercedes-Benz. In 2019, they have launched their factory and they produce 10,000 10, cars a year. E-class, GLC, GLE, and GLS. One of UK uh, companies, road construction company, is planning also to be localized on the territory of this industrial park. Another, uh, another opportunity is pharmaceutical cluster and for and medical industry. Every four Russian medicine is produced in Moscow region. Uh, US General Electric and Varian with its tomographs, Dodge Philips with ultrasound machines are also produced on our territory. One of the best places for localization is Special Economic Zone Dubna with its federal and regional benefits, all the infrastructure and university close located. In 2020, Special Economic Zone Dubna was named the best innovation Special Economic Zone in Russia by federal ranking. Also, it has international awards for infrastructure and development. You can see on the slide examples of, comp of uh, factories, companies from Germany, India, and Russia. Tourism, tourism and hospitality. Thanks for closed borders, domestic tourism grow and grow. We've got four major attractions known all over the world and of course in Russia. These are Kremlin of Zarysk, Kolomna, Trinity Sergio Slavra, and Arhangelsk Manor. We are highly interested in new hotel chains or private hotels. We pre our land department uh, have prepared 58 land plots suitable 
and ready for hotel construction. Of course, we've got a special support measures for investors who are looking for hotel uh, industry. Uh, we like a refund of costs for creation engineering infrastructure and refund of the interest rate on the credit. Just some examples uh, that, I, uh, that uh, these support measures are not just uh, like some uh, figures or just uh, uh, articles, re uh, regional articles. Uh, these are three uh, examples, three, uh, three investors that got support measures from the regional government. Holiday Inn, Hotel Ibis, and Hotel Persvet from Russia. As for construction, Moscow region is a leader in housing construction. More than 10 million of square meters housing construction every year and more than 6 million of commercial real estate is constructed on our territory. In Moscow city, the figures are similar. That's why we've got more than 200 companies in uh, construction and construction material uh, sector. Uh, for COVID period, uh, it was an uh, interesting situation that construction uh, industry uh, shows a significant growth. Uh, the, the, the second place after pharmaceutical industry, more than plus 20%. Most of people uh, who stayed at home and uh, didn't visit their workplaces decided to make some changes in their flats in their apartment houses so we've got for example uh, uh, plus 40 uh, plus 35 40 percent uh, of wallpaper sales and one of the leading industry in moscow region is food processing we we've done a lot to be leaders in this industry, of course, because of the population and uh, the territory is uh, ready for uh, agriculture projects. Uh, leader, uh, foreign companies are highly interested in uh, food processing sector, we've got tens of foreign brands on our territory. For example, Mars Holding, they've got four, five factories. PepsiCo, they've got three factories on our territory. Coca-Cola, two factories, and many, many others. As for support measures, of course, it is the most popular question of investors who comes to Moscow region. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the support measures that can be interested is a staff preparation. For our regional budget, we prepared edu educational pro program with investor. It helps to prepare young people on the, the company's request and start their career just after graduating the university polytechnics, not wasting additional time for advanced qualification. And of course, we've got, uh, we've got additional support measures, tax benefits, regional development fund for money loans, compensation for infrastructure, if you need some special construction office for simplification or construction procedures for investor. Also, I want to remind that we are talking not about Moscow city or Moscow region market. Uh, as I have, I have already mentioned, we are quite good logistic. Uh, we've got a good logistic uh, infrastructure. We're talking about all Russian CIS market and we've got two railway logistic terminals, Russia connecting Russia and China uh, that uh, helps to deliver containers three, four times faster than via ship. Thank you very much for 
your for, for your attention my contact details and finalizing my speech um, i want to uh, once again to highlight why our region is so popular among foreign and russian companies the first one is population more than 25 million of people the second is logistics center of european part of russia well developed in uh, and infrastructured uh, industrial sites and special economic zone a set of tax and financial support measures well qualified staff and a team with hundreds of projects experience thank you very much welcome to moscow region uh, Deputy Minister Loganov, uh, thank you very much for that uh, very comprehensive and interesting overview of the Moscow region. Uh, obviously, lots of opportunities there. Um, to the audience, um, now is your opportunity to ask any question you may have uh, to uh, Deputy Minister Loganov. So please uh, engage. Uh, I'm sure he's uh, prepared to answer pretty much any questions you have. Um, whilst we uh, wait for those questions, as I said before, please use the chat room uh, if you don't want to address your questions directly. If you would like to ask them direct to the minister, please use the hand up function and I will come to you. But I'll, I'll kick things off, um, if I may. Um, obviously, the coronavirus has been very, very difficult time for everyone. Uh, businesses um, have been, like everyone else, um, subject to the lockdowns, etc. cetera. Um, and um, I know nothing beats um, for nothing nothing is better than um, actually visiting a place for a business have, have you managed to organize virtual tours uh, of some of your facilities uh, and um, out of interest uh, have those proved successful we've sort of toyed with the idea and um, uh, there's been a mixed take up on those so um, um, Deputy Minister, very interested in, in your views on those and how, how, how you use them. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your question. It's a good idea maybe to make a, a short overview via uh, Zoom or uh, my, uh, uh, Microsoft. But, but of course, it's much better and my, much efficient when uh, you can visit by yourself, not, uh, not through the screen because it's quite difficult to understand uh, the, the, the situation through, uh, through the screen. For, for example, just now I can see uh, only you and maybe uh, one or two more uh, guys uh, listening our presentation. All other screens are switched off or just uh, have some photos. So I'm not sure that the, the, there are people or maybe just some hope so. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Ah, oh, a question oh, from... Uh, Sergei Averin. Oh, you know, yes, yeah. And then we'll come to... It Nisha. wasn't a question, it's just to, to show that we are here. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, yeah, Thank you. you have to ask Thank away. you very much for your support. Um, oh, Nick. I, I, I can see Nick Reels. Yes. Um, can you un unmute yourself, Nick, if you're about? Yeah, there you go. Uh, I can ask. Good afternoon. Yeah, thank you. Good to see you. Yeah. Good, good afternoon, uh, Anton. Uh, I, I didn't necessarily have a question, Alf. I was, I was just going to make a comment that we are clearly JCB at the moment is um, we're in the middle of a project, which is part of special investment contract. And we've selected Moscow region as, as the area for us to build a new facility if the special investment contract is is successful and um, and the Moscow regional team have been um, have been very very helpful in their assistance in our dealings with the with the Ministry of Industry and Trade uh, and I think that's you know that's very important for any foreign investor if you're going to try and benefit from the packages that the federal government um, offer then having local support uh, such as the people from the Moscow region to help you navigate the, uh, the, the legislation and the democracy and, and everything that goes with it is, is, shouldn't be undervalued. And, um, and the Moscow region team are, um, are remaining very close with us at the moment to, to try and get our special investment contract concluded at some point this year. Thanks, Nick. Um, Nick, can I, uh, of, obviously of interest to, to the wider audience, can, can I 
just can you say a few words on on, on how you view the localization process because obviously that that's a, a big consideration uh, with, with that, I'm, I'm not meaning to be controversial it, it's just obviously a genuine um consideration that uh, if, if you're if you haven't invested in russia before you, you won't be familiar with particularly I, I, uh, I can say a few words i mean it is clearly you know our um our application for the special investment contract with with the with the Russian government is the key part of that is is localization. That is that is what we're right at the middle. We're in the middle of at the moment. We are building up a a schedule of localization over the fifteen year period of the special investment contract. Um, it is challenging because as a manufacturer, we, we, although we have factories all around the globe producing machines, we don't, if we have a fa our factory in Brazil, doesn't entirely use components from Brazil. You know, it sources from India, from China, and, and the supply capabilities in Russia is today is not where some of those other countries are. And, and the challenge with that is understanding what is available in Russia today for localization and what might be available over the next 10 years uh, and and that is that's quite a it's, there's a lot of work involved because you you clearly have to make a commitment and some some com, some processes such as casting in our industry so c casting of engine blocks, maybe valve blocks, is, is just not available. Um, but as Anton mentioned earlier, the localization now, the schedule is based on a point system and you have to commit to that point system and you have to predict in some way what is gonna be available in five years in Russia that may not be available today. So it's clearly the, the rewards, if you manage to do it in Russia, are large because it's a developing market. Lots of spend on infrastructure, which for JCB is very important. Um, but but it is um, it is difficult to predict exactly what will be available from a supplier base and a technology base in Russia that isn't available today over the next decade. And I think, and that's the process we are working through at the moment and as I've said, Moscow region and to be fair, the Ministry of Industry and uh, Ministry of Industry and Trade have been very forthcoming in giving us contacts for Russian suppliers that we can talk to. Um, but you you need to go in into it with your eyes wide open. I don't know if that answers your question uh, enough, uh, Alf. Yeah, no, thank you very much. That's great. Uh, Anton, would you like to comment on that? Or? Uh, uh, thank you, Nick, very much for your support and for your uh, warm words towards Moscow region and uh, some words about your project. Uh, that's right. As you have mentioned, there is a, a point system. You should earn um, some amount, uh, you should uh, earn amount of these points just to get uh, the federal uh, bene uh, uh, support measures, uh, federal benefits, and uh, uh, the federal government push uh, all uh, manufacturers, car manufacturers, road construction equipment manufacturers to uh, localize uh, uh, the, uh, for, for for bigger and bigger localization on the territory of Russian Federation. So that's why that's why there is a huge market for. Uh, producers of spare parts, even from uh, UK or from other parts of the world, uh, and uh, uh, they are welcome in Moscow region. And we 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 can help these companies uh, for uh, uh, for for their localization. Great. Thank you very much. I, I think that was very sort of instructive for, for the wider audience. Um, I'll now go to uh, Svetlana Harwood, who, who's a, an old friend of the chamber, um, and she'd like to ask you a question direct, um, Anton. So I will hand over to her. Thank you very much, Alf. Really appreciate it. Oh, for some reason, my video hasn't quite started. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah. 
Absolutely not. Thank you very much. It was very, very informative um, a presentation, lots of very useful information. In particular, um, I was interested in the uh, scientific potential slide where you were talking about the universities, about the education, about scientific uh, research and development. Uh, our company is an uh, interactive uh, technology for the education, uh, for corporate and for the research. So uh, we would be very much interested to, well, I would be very much interested to know if there are, there are any specific projects uh, that maybe we could work with you or talk with your team about. Um, and we would be very much interested uh, to engage. We are uh, present in Russia. We are working with the, uh, uh, some companies in Russia, um, uh, but specifically targeting or talking about more in detail about some of the things that we do in the region. We would be very interested to talk a little bit more in detail and maybe something you can share now about it. Thank you. Thank you for your proposal. Uh, of course, we, we, we can be in contact. Uh, as I have understood, you've got some experience uh, of working in Russia uh, and we and you are working with some Russian companies, am I right? Yes, we do have the distributors that we work with. However, we do have the office in Russia and we actually engage with the educational authorities, with the uh, schools, with the universities, with the ministries and departments. Mm -hmm. uh, we do run the research um, and it's not just the schools, the normal education, K-12, well, it's higher education, particularly specialized education, actually, as you we were talking about the industry um uh, uh, being really heavily pre presented in your area so um as we know that they tend to um teach and bring up their own um specialists so engaging with uh, such companies is um, also of use and i do apologize i'm not sure how to get the video going so that you can actually see me as well you can just see our uh, you, 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 you've got quite colored wallpaper <laughs> <laughs> on, on, on your screen. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so my my main question was about your uh, uh, Russian partners or your uh, uh, di distributors, uh, just to understand whether your product is uh, already uh, prepared for Russian market or you should uh, need uh, you need additional time for uh, this uh, preparation. No, we are fully present. It's fully localized, certified, so it's um, properly imported. Our partners have imported it uh, into Russia uh, through all of the customs procedures. So we are present fully properly. So just re really reaching out to the potentials and the opportunities. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Svetlana, and, and good to hear from you. I like the, uh, as I said, the very colorful screen. It's a shame we couldn't see you as well. But anyways, um, I'll now um, David Gardner, um, who has a, a long history with Russia, um, has a question for you, uh, Anton. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Or good day. Good day. Uh, my question is associated with the um, reworking of all of our domestic waste. Uh, in March of 2020, last year, uh, we had a large delegation from Russia, from the Russian regions, which unfortunately did not include anybody from Moscow because of the start of the pandemic. But um, I've been studying this question, uh, and in fact, we were able to show these people some very large installations which were dealing with waste, uh, which were dealing with the uh, vehicles which collect it, which was dealing with the type of containers which are available. Uh, and what we would like, well, certainly what I would like is to be able to approach various companies here who have a vast international experience of dealing with waste and I talk, uh, perhaps, uh, if I can just mention one of my roles, which was the director of Svetoy Stochnik. So I know a lot about bottles. <laughs> uh, also, I was the uh, com country director for Nestle breakfast cereals. So I know a lot about cartons. And all of these things need to be disposed of responsibly and I get pictures now and then uh, from uh, my friends in, in Russia 
uh, of the various organized or the various types of container and so on, which are being produced, uh, which don't always seem to be ideal. But uh, what what we'd really like is to have some kind of formal inquiry indicating uh, what capacity uh, you, you're seeking for uh, for the various installations which would deal with your waste problem, which is huge. And I do recall, uh, I think it was actually at the end of the last year, um, I do recall Mr. Putin saying he wanted to close 190 illegal landfills and replace them with 220 uh, units for the uh, reworking of waste. So, you know, it's a very interesting question for us because we're dealing with it. We're probably not dealing with it ideally. I still get lots of people that put foam polystyrene into recyclable waste where we can't deal with it and so on. But we have approached the problem, and it's something which I've approached since I've been uh, semi-retired back here in the UK. And uh, it's something I'd like to bring to, to Russia, most certainly because of my frequent visits to the regions of uh, Odinsova, of Kubinka, and so on. I know people there, and I know the problem. So. If there are some formal inquiries, we'd be very pleased to receive them. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, it, 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 this question is very popular. Uh, a lot of uh, Russian foreign companies are interested in uh, waste market in Moscow region and Moscow city as, as, as well because of the population and uh, our uh, program of re-innovation We've got a lot of garbage uh, and uh, uh, we've got a program of uh, waste, uh, waste management program together with the federal government. Uh, as you have mentioned, it was uh, uh, Mr. Putin's uh, 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 push to close illegal or even legal landfills on the territory of Moscow region. So if I'm not mistaken, this year, uh, the, uh, the last landfill on, the, on our territory will be closed. Uh, in this moment, we, uh, we have got four uh, waste burning plants under construction by Rostech. And we are waiting the first two will be constructed at the beginning of the next 2022. And two more will be uh, till 2023 will be launched. We've got more than 40 uh, separating compl uh, waste separation complexes on the territory of our region. And of, of course, uh, uh, companies who recycle waste, tires, plastics, glass, uh, paper, uh, starting their recycling procedures even every month. A, a, a lot of companies, but most of them are small and medium-sized enterprises, small business. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's uh, that's very interesting. Uh, certainly, the units that we'd seen uh, when your uh, delegation arrived in uh, the UK uh, were something like four hundred thousand tons a year, for example, as an incineration plant, and a similar size of waste separation plant and so on. So these were really large units, but it would be interesting to know the size of units that you're looking for in the Moscow region uh, to see if we might be able to come up with some kind of proposals. Mm -hmm. The sort of proposals I have, I see the equipment actually, uh, apart from identification of the various types of uh, waste is really quite simple. And it struck me that um, once it had been uh, engineered that in fact uh, local uh, 
local Russian enterprises, engineering enterprises, could produce some of this equipment for themselves. And so we could share within the technical documentation the design of the equipment. So th these are the sort of things I had in mind. Thank you, David. That, that's really good. I, I know it's um, uh, an area we think that there's a great deal of potential for collaboration and, and thank you for your persevering with it. I, I know you, you've uh, been um, uh, working at this for, for a long time now and, and hopefully it will come to something uh, tangible in, in the not too distant future. Um, just moving on now, we have uh, another question from uh, Adrian Chung. Um, he uh, works in the tech industry. Uh, Specific, specifically on a in an internet platform company and he'd like to know about uh, he, he'd like um, your view uh, Anton if that's right on the investment environment for the tech industry uh, in the Moscow region at the moment uh, and, and anything you can sort of comment in, in that respect good question thank you uh, thank you Adrian Chunk uh, as I have already mentioned, we've got a number of universities and polytechnics on our territory with Technopark uh, on its territory or, or quite close located. Uh, so uh, most of, uh, not, not most, but a part of uh, companies who are uh, located in these Technoparks are, are working in field of uh, internet, about, uh, in field of some uh, d uh, digital uh, pro, uh, products. Uh, in Russia, uh, most of these companies are uh, working like a small, medium-sized enterprises, small companies, and we've got uh, special support measures for them. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, companies with foreign uh, investments uh, by Russian legislation cannot be uh, 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 can, cannot get these support, uh, these support, uh, support measures, uh, un, un, unfortunately. And uh, if you will organize a company in Moscow region, and if you will hire, uh, and you will organize some workplaces, and you will hire staff, of course you can join uh, these uh, uh, support measures as for. Uh, some subsidies for buying equipment, uh, help with uh, marketplaces, with internet uh, websites, uh, and uh, of course with uh, some regional or even federal uh, support uh, to push your product uh, and to find buyers. Thank you. Great. Uh, th thank you, Anton. Um, Adrian, would you like to follow up on that or, or is that... Um answered your question. That's, that's all good. Thank you very much. Great. Uh, yeah. yeah, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, we have time for perhaps one or two more questions if anyone has any. Of course, um, if there aren't any, um, we've uh, covered a lot of ground there. And um, uh, of course, uh, Anton's uh, uh, details are on the website. He's uh, put out his uh, email address if you would like to uh, um, contact him directly, but uh, we'll, we'll just uh, give it a couple more seconds to see if anyone has a final question. Uh, I, I, I can uh, I can make a short announcement, not a yes, question. please. Uh, the, uh, in in uh, like final final. Yes, thank you. Uh, or if so, if someone uh, from uh, our team today uh, who are listening to our presentation, um, we will be on St. Petersburg Economic Forum in the beginning of June. Uh, you are welcome uh, on our stand of Moscow Region stand. We will uh, uh, be there from from the second till the fifth of June, so you're welcome. Please feel free to contact us to visit our stand. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I, I know um, a lot of uh, companies are trying to come, uh, certainly from the UK, um, although uh, with the various complications, it, it's uh, uh, usually on, on going back to England seems to be the, the, the big difficulty because uh, quarantine's still in place, but uh, I, I know of several CEOs who are coming out for it. Uh, and then, of course, the uh, um, 
contingent who are already in Russia uh, will be attending. So uh, that, that's a very kind offer and I'm sure they'll look forward to meeting you there. Okay, I, I don't think we have any more questions, so I think we'll um, call it a day. But uh, Anton, thank you very, very much um, for your time. It's been a really uh, useful and interesting overview of, of the Moscow region. Um, I know we've had a lot of um, good questions on it and uh, you've imparted a, a lot of useful information. As I've said, all the details are on the website. Uh, we have recorded the webinar for posterity, which will be posted um, either uh, today or tomorrow. And um, of course, you've put your details out so people can contact you direct. Anton, thank you very much. Um, uh, to the audience, thank you for joining us today. I hope you found that useful. I hope you'll join us for future webinars. All the details are on the website. But for now, thank you very much and have a good afternoon. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.